right here where this valley comes out, there's a, a, a natural waterway, it's a dry riverbed, that is called a wadi. Somebody pushed all the rocks out of the way to make a path for wagons, apparently. An important discovery has just been made that could revolutionize our understanding of an ancient mystery. A pivotal moment has arrived in the story of the Red Sea crossing, during which the waters parted, allowing the people to pass through safely. This exciting breakthrough has captivated both the scientific and religious communities as new evidence emerges that might shed light on this enduring story. Could this new evidence finally confirm the biblical account of the Red Sea crossing? How might these findings alter our perception of this legendary event? Let's delve deeper into this intriguing discovery and explore a surprising twist that could challenge everything we know about the Red Sea crossing. The Grand Exodus Tale In the narrative of Exodus, the Bible places significant emphasis on the nation of Israel, positioning it as the central character throughout the entire account. This Israel, which has evolved into the modern nation recognized today, is depicted as the protagonist in many of the Bible's most remarkable stories. These narratives, which span millennia, are intricately woven throughout the biblical text, with the most compelling accounts detailed in the Book of Exodus. The Book of Exodus, derived from the Greek term meaning departure, vividly chronicles the dramatic journey of the Israelites from Egypt, where they endured generations of slavery, to Canaan, the land promised to them by God. This journey represents not only a pivotal event in biblical history, but also a foundational narrative within numerous religious traditions. Among the most extraordinary events documented in Exodus is the liberation of the Israelites from the oppressive rule of Pharaoh. This story is well known for the ten plagues that God inflicted upon Egypt to compel Pharaoh to release the Israelites. These plagues included the transformation of the Nile into blood, swarms of locusts, and the death of the firstborn sons of Egypt. The dramatic climax occurs when Pharaoh ultimately permits the Israelites to depart, only to subsequently reconsider and pursue them with his army. As the Israelites fled, they reached the Red Sea, finding themselves in a precarious situation, with the sea before them and Pharaoh's army advancing from behind. According to the biblical account, this marks a pivotal moment in the story. The Bible recounts an astonishing event in which the Red Sea parted, enabling the Israelites to traverse on dry ground, flanked by towering walls of water. This event, known as the Parting of the Red Sea, holds a central place in both Jewish and Christian traditions. The timing and scale of this miracle are extraordinary. In a dramatic turn, Pharaoh and his army pursued the Israelites into the parted sea. However, the waters returned at the precise moment the Israelites had successfully crossed, engulfing the Egyptian forces and thwarting their escape. One might imagine the profound experience of being among the Israelites who witnessed this remarkable scene. It is a challenge to articulate how a vast body of water appeared to possess an autonomous will parting to create a dry passage for approximately two million individuals. The sheer magnitude of this miracle is indeed staggering. The Red Sea, also referred to as the Sea of Reeds, extends approximately 1,400 miles in length and exhibits a range of depths. The biblical narrative describes it as having miraculously parted, facilitating the passage of an entire nation. This account transcends mere storytelling. It serves as a significant element in comprehending ancient perceptions of divine intervention and miraculous phenomena. Archaeological and historical inquiries have investigated the plausibility of such events, exploring various theories, including natural occurrences such as tidal waves or strong winds, to provide context for the biblical narrative. Despite extensive research, the story endures as a profound symbol of faith and divine authority, having been transmitted through millennia and continuing to evoke wonder and scholarly debate. Notably, many individuals find this narrative entirely credible. According to biblical accounts, this extraordinary event was orchestrated by God to demonstrate His immense power to all nations, particularly through the people of Israel. 
This divine display is perceived as a clear indication of God's might and purpose, which accounts for its acceptance by a broad audience, nearly universal, with the exception of the scientific community. Scientists adopt a different perspective, relying on empirical evidence and logical reasoning. For an event to gain acceptance within the scientific community, it must be substantiated by robust facts and rigorous data. Historical events are subjected to scrutiny through archaeological findings, documented records, and physical evidence. In contrast, religious or divine interpretations, while culturally significant and impactful, do not consistently align with scientific methodologies. A notable example of this tension is the ongoing debate surrounding miracles documented in various religious texts. Scientists strive to identify natural explanations and observable evidence for these occurrences. A prominent case is the parting of the Red Sea, as depicted in the Bible, which some scientists have attempted to elucidate through natural phenomena such as volcanic eruptions or strong winds. However, as long as such events remain unaccounted for by established scientific principles, they will continue to be a subject of contention. The pursuit of understanding remains active, with researchers engaging in the examination of ancient texts, conducting experiments, and analyzing data to reconcile historical accounts with scientific explanations. Until verifiable evidence emerges, narratives that challenge the laws of science will persist in provoking debate and intellectual curiosity. The discussions surrounding the Red Sea crossing invoke considerable debate, and the reasons for this are readily apparent. The concept of an ocean parting spontaneously is extraordinary and contradicts contemporary understandings of physics and geology. There is currently no scientific law or theory that substantiates the notion of an ocean splitting of its own accord. The forces that dictate Earth's physical processes, such as gravity and ocean currents, would inherently oppose such an occurrence. For instance, gravity, a fundamental force, constantly draws objects toward the Earth's center and does not simply cease to operate or diminish in strength at specific locations. Considering the well-known biblical narrative of the Red Sea parting, frequently referenced in these discussions, if the sea had indeed split to form a pathway with towering walls of water, the forces required to maintain such a structure would be immense. Estimates suggest that the height of these water walls would need to exceed 100 feet to accommodate the mass of individuals and animals. Sustaining such an arrangement without succumbing to gravitational collapse presents a significant challenge. Furthermore, real-world phenomena such as tidal waves or tsunamis may induce temporary changes in water levels, but they do not create stable, traversable paths through the ocean. Research into analogous events indicates that while substantial waves or seismic activities can lead to brief fluctuations in water levels, they fail to produce the extraordinary conditions described in the biblical account. Some propose that a divine or supernatural force could account for such an event. However, this notion is not subject to verification through empirical evidence. Modern scientific inquiry relies on reproducible experiments, and observable data, and divine intervention falls outside this empirical framework. Until conclusive evidence is presented, the assertion that an ocean could part, enabling millions to traverse on dry ground, remains a captivating yet contentious subject. Moreover, several archaeologists and scholars contend that the pharaoh referenced in the Exodus narrative may not have been submerged under the waters as depicted in the biblical text. They suggest that he could have continued to govern for several additional years following the liberation of the Israelites from Egyptian servitude. This hypothesis is supported by historical records and inscriptions that indicate the Pharaoh's reign may have extended beyond the Exodus event. For instance, some researchers highlight the absence of definitive archaeological evidence for the mass drowning of the Pharaoh's army which has spurred debates regarding the historical veracity of the biblical account. It is also posited that the Pharaoh's body may have been recovered, or that he might have remained on land while his forces were engulfed by the waters. 
To reconcile these disparate perspectives, scientists and historians have engaged in extensive research efforts, including underwater excavations and analyses of ancient texts. Their objective is to uncover further evidence regarding the Exodus and its historical context. However, this endeavor is complicated by the significant differences between contemporary technological capabilities and those of the ancient world. Identifying the precise path through the ocean, which is believed to have existed for over 4,000 years, poses a formidable challenge for scientists investigating the Gulf of Aqaba. Accurately locating the site of the Red Sea crossing is of paramount importance. Ancient texts, notably those found in the Bible, provide remarkably detailed descriptions of the site of the crossing, which have significantly narrowed the search to specific areas within Egypt. These descriptions serve as a valuable guide in this pursuit. According to these ancient accounts, the crossing must have taken place in a substantial body of water with a minimum depth of 2,000 feet. This depth requirement is critical, as it effectively rules out smaller bodies of water, such as lakes and shallow rivers, which do not meet the necessary depth criteria. The Gulf of Aqaba, situated between the Sinai Peninsula and Saudi Arabia, fulfills this requirement with depths exceeding 1,800 feet. Initially, early researchers concentrated on the Gulf of Suez as a potential crossing site. However, this area was ultimately deemed unsuitable due to its significantly shallower depths, averaging around 900 feet. The disparity between the depth specified in the scriptures and the actual depth of the Gulf of Suez led to the conclusion that it could not have been the site of the crossing. Following a thorough investigation, researchers identified the Gulf of Aqaba as a body of water that aligns perfectly with the biblical descriptions of the crossing site. Notably, one of the most remarkable findings was the depth of the Gulf of Aqaba, which reaches approximately 5,000 feet at its deepest point. For context, the Empire State Building stands at about 1,454 feet tall, including its antenna, meaning that the deepest sections of the gulf are nearly three times the height of this iconic structure. The magnitude of this depth implies that the walls of water described in the biblical narrative would have been extraordinarily high, far exceeding the height of any modern building. Envisioning these towering walls of water, thousands of feet high, flanking the Israelites during their perilous journey, evokes a vivid and dramatic scene. The sheer scale of these water walls would have rendered the Israelites feeling small and insignificant, contributing to the overall gravity of the moment. Moreover, the Gulf of Aqaba is strategically located along ancient trade routes and has historically been a significant area in regional affairs. It acts as a natural barrier between the Sinai Peninsula and the Arabian Peninsula, further enhancing the strategic importance of the crossing. This significance would have been amplified by the presence of Egyptian chariots in close pursuit, as chariots represented the advanced military technology of the time, posing a considerable threat to those fleeing. The experience of the Israelites, as they found themselves flanked by towering walls of water while evading an advancing army, must have been both awe-inspiring and profoundly unsettling. The biblical narrative recounts a dramatic episode in which a powerful wind parted the ocean, thereby creating a pathway through the sea. This extraordinary event, commonly referred to as the parting of the Red Sea, not only involved the separation of the waters, but also subjected the people to intense, continuous gusts of wind for several hours. This wind, described in various accounts as sufficiently strong to dry the seabed, contributed an element of chaos to their escape. Consider the plight of a community that had become accustomed to a certain level of comfort and stability in Egypt, enjoying regular meals and a predictable routine. Suddenly, they were led into the unknown by a singular leader, Moses, with no clear plan or assurance of reaching the promised land. This scenario must have been incredibly stressful. The palpable fear and doubt among the people were evident particularly when they expressed a preference to remain in Egypt rather than confront the harsh realities of the desert. Compounding their sense of hopelessness was the imminent threat posed by the Egyptian army. 
the Egyptians were renowned for their advanced chariot technology, which enabled them to travel faster than most other armies of that era. As the Israelites fled, the Egyptian chariots, capable of speeds up to 25 miles per hour, relentlessly pursued them. Despite having traveled for 10 days, the Israelites remained within the range of being overtaken by their pursuers, exacerbating their desperation and fear. In their minds, they likely felt trapped, with no viable escape from the oncoming Egyptian chariots. Shifting our focus, we now address a compelling inquiry. Was the Gulf of Aqaba indeed the location of the biblical crossing? If so, how did researchers arrive at this conclusion? Depth alone is insufficient to identify the precise crossing site, as other areas may exhibit similar depths. The Gulf of Aqaba, situated at the northern tip of the Red Sea, has been the subject of rigorous investigation. Recent studies employ advanced underwater technology, including sonar mapping and submersibles, to explore the region's depths and uncover pertinent clues. Some researchers have identified ancient coral reefs and underwater land formations that correspond to descriptions found in historical texts. Furthermore, artifacts such as chariot wheels and human remains have been discovered, providing additional context. By synthesizing these findings with historical accounts, scientists are progressively advancing toward a clearer understanding of whether this was indeed the crossing point. The integration of archaeological evidence and cutting-edge technology not only aids in the pursuit of historical truth, but also transforms this search into a captivating exploration of the past. Mysteries of the Gulf of Aqaba The Gulf of Aqaba, situated in the northeastern region of the Arabian Peninsula, is a prominent geographical feature bordered by Egypt, Jordan, Israel, and Saudi Arabia. This body of water possesses considerable historical and biblical significance due to its associations with ancient events detailed in the Book of Exodus. The Gulf of Aqaba is particularly noteworthy for its connection to the biblical narrative of the Red Sea crossing. As a natural extension of the Red Sea, it has served as a critical maritime route for millennia. The biblical account of the Israelites' exodus from Egypt describes their passage across a substantial body of water, which many scholars postulate may have been the Gulf of Aqaba. Mount Sinai, located on the opposite side of the Red Sea, is traditionally regarded as the site where Moses received the Ten Commandments. The Gulf's proximity to Mount Sinai lends credence to the hypothesis that this was indeed the location of the Red Sea crossing. This region has become a focal point for archaeological and historical inquiry as scholars seek to uncover evidence supporting the biblical narrative. Of particular interest is the narrow gorge known as Piha Hahiroth, which translates to the opening of the mouth in Hebrew. This gorge is bordered by towering granite walls, forming a natural passage that aligns with the biblical depiction of a constricted route. The biblical narrative recounts the dramatic moment when the Israelites, perceiving Pharaoh's army approaching and a vast ocean before them, found themselves at a significant juncture. This location corresponds with the biblical account of divine intervention on behalf of the Israelites. According to the book of Exodus, a pillar of cloud descended, enveloping the Egyptian army in darkness while the Israelites traversed the Red Sea. The gorge of Piha Hahiroth plays a crucial role in this narrative, as it leads to an area known as Wadi Watir, which would have been a pivotal point had this location indeed served as the site of the Exodus. Remarkably, the geographical characteristics of this region continue to support this theory. The crossing of the Red Sea remains one of the most contentious events in biblical history, and this particular gorge aligns well with the physical descriptions provided in ancient texts. Nevertheless, the landscape has undergone significant changes over the centuries. Modern infrastructure, including roads and buildings, now occupies much of the area. The Gulf of Aqaba, once a remote and uncharted expanse of water, has evolved into a bustling international shipping route, currently handling a substantial portion of global trade, including products from the Dead Sea. What is particularly intriguing is that beneath the bustling waters, 
researchers have discovered evidence that may corroborate the biblical narrative of the Red Sea crossing. Submerged artifacts and remains located in the Gulf of Aqaba suggest an ancient event that aligns with the biblical account. With the successful identification of the location described in the scripture as the site of the crossing, and with the details aligning so closely, scholars can assert that a significant milestone has been reached. This convergence of evidence not only enhances the credibility of the biblical account, but also implies that the narrative may contain a core of truth. For example, archaeological discoveries in this region have unveiled remnants of ancient infrastructure that could correspond to the biblical descriptions of the crossing event. Additionally, ongoing research in the area known as Wadi Watir has proven particularly enlightening. During the rainy season, this region transforms into a substantial body of water, occasionally flooding the adjacent modern roadway, thereby illustrating the geographical transformations over time. Now we turn to today's featured selection. For centuries, the narrative of the Red Sea crossing was largely dismissed as a myth or legend. Skeptics regarded it as mere folklore, while adherents maintained their faith in the story. However, in the sweltering summer of 2024, a pivotal moment occurred. A team of dedicated marine archaeologists, led by Dr. Elena Martinez, embarked on an exploration of the seabed near the Sinai Peninsula. This expedition was motivated by a tantalizing clue found in ancient manuscripts, a reference to chariots that were believed to have been lost beneath the waves. Despite years of diligent searching, the team had yet to uncover any significant findings. One particularly hot afternoon, as the crew's submersible scanned the ocean floor, a series of anomalous shapes appeared on the sonar. With hearts racing in anticipation, they descended deeper into the water. What they discovered left them in awe. Rows of chariot wheels, remarkably preserved and glistening beneath layers of sediment. Among these artifacts lay human and horse bones, silent witnesses to a catastrophic event. Dr. Martinez and her team painstakingly excavated the site, uncovering hieroglyphs that spoke of a great exodus and a miraculous parting of the sea. The crowning discovery was a golden amulet inscribed with the name Moses. The world's media descended upon the site, and the story captivated millions. Scientists, historians, and theologians debated the findings, but one thing was undeniable. The evidence was overwhelming. The Red Sea crossing was no longer just a story. It was a historical event etched into the ocean's depths. The discovery reignited discussions about the intersection of faith and science, bridging divides and sparking new explorations into the ancient past. As Dr. Martinez gazed at the shimmering artifacts, she couldn't help but feel a sense of awe. They had not just uncovered relics, they had found a piece of humanity's shared history. Could these findings finally unravel the mystery of how such a monumental event occurred? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Moses. The Ancient Pillar and Soul Recent scientific investigations have yielded a remarkable discovery within a dry riverbed, providing compelling evidence of an ancient event that has captivated researchers. Among the scattered stones, scientists observed that certain rocks appeared to have been purposefully displaced, forming a discernible pathway. This intriguing formation raises the possibility that the area may have been influenced by a powerful wind or other natural phenomena potentially corresponding with the biblical narrative of the parting of the Red Sea, which created a pathway of dry land. A pivotal moment in this research occurred when researcher Ron Wyatt uncovered an ancient pillar submerged in water. Initially, the pillar seemed to be an ordinary artifact, seemingly disconnected from the epic narrative of a crossing that transpired millennia ago. However, what appeared to be an unremarkable find revealed itself to be extraordinary. Wyatt meticulously extracted the pillar and cleaned it, revealing that, despite significant erosion likely caused by prolonged exposure to water, the artifact retained ancient Hebrew inscriptions. 
This preservation is particularly noteworthy, as Hebrew inscriptions from that historical period are rare and often poorly maintained. To the astonishment of all, the inscriptions remained legible, identifying the pillar as having been erected by King Solomon. It appears that this ancient pillar served to mark a significant location, the presumed site of the Red Sea crossing, a pivotal event in biblical history. This pillar not only functions as a historical marker, but also pays tribute to the dramatic events chronicled in the Bible. While it does not provide definitive proof of the crossing, it contributes valuable context to the ongoing inquiry into the historical realities of the event. An especially intriguing clue associated with the Red Sea crossing is a unique species of fish discovered beneath the Gulf of Aqaba. This region is significant as it is believed to be the site of the biblical crossing. Scientific explorations of the depths of this gulf have uncovered a distinctive fish species that exists nowhere else in the world, locally referred to as the Soul of Moses, which adds a layer of cultural significance to this discovery. What distinguishes this fish is its atypical eye placement. Unlike most fish that possess eyes on opposite sides of their heads, this species has both eyes situated on the same side. This unusual anatomical feature has given rise to local legends. According to folklore, when the Red Sea parted at Moses' command, this fish literally split into two, symbolizing the event. Archaeologists have further investigated the Gulf of Aqaba and have uncovered surprising insights regarding the legendary Red Sea crossing. For centuries, it has been envisioned that the Israelites traversed a smooth, straight path through the waters. However, recent underwater explorations have revealed a markedly different reality. The Gulf of Aqaba features a highly irregular seafloor. Utilizing advanced sonar technology and submersibles, scientists have discovered that the ocean floor is characterized by steep underwater canyons, ridges, and plateaus. Certain areas reach profound depths of over 1,800 feet, while others rise sharply toward the surface. This uneven terrain suggests that the crossing was far from a straightforward endeavor. The Israelites would have had to navigate a challenging landscape of submerged hills and valleys, complicating their journey significantly. Revelation of the Red Sea According to biblical accounts, Pharaoh and his army pursued the Israelites through a miraculous dry path that opened in the midst of the Red Sea. This event, detailed in the book of Exodus, is commonly referred to as the parting of the Red Sea. Under the leadership of Moses, the Israelites crossed safely over the dry seabed. However, as Pharaoh's forces advanced, they encountered catastrophic difficulties within the sea. The chariots, which were advanced war machines of ancient Egypt, characterized by spoked wheels and often adorned with intricate designs, began to malfunction severely. Reports indicate that the wheels of Pharaoh's chariots started to detach, rendering them immobilized and preventing the soldiers from either advancing or retreating. This mechanical failure may have been precipitated by a sudden alteration in the seabed or attributed to a supernatural cause, as described in the biblical narrative. As the waters began to return, they engulfed the chariots and the soldiers, creating a chaotic scene wherein the soldiers, trapped and powerless, likely experienced a harrowing struggle. The returning waters, surging with immense force, would have generated a powerful torrent, pulling everything below the surface. This catastrophic occurrence purportedly involved around 600 chariots, a considerable force for an ancient military. The chariots, along with the soldiers' weapons and armor, would have been swept into the depths of the sea. In contemporary times, scientists and archaeologists hypothesize that remnants of this historical event may still be preserved on the ocean floor. Researchers have been investigating potential sites along the Gulf of Aqaba, where some theorize the crossing may have taken place, with hopes of uncovering artifacts such as chariot wheels, spears, swords, and pieces of armor. Underwater archaeology has already revealed various artifacts from ancient times within the region, including pottery and tools, indicating that the search for remnants of Pharaoh's army is not entirely implausible. 
recent discoveries have yielded compelling evidence that lends support to the ancient narrative of the Red Sea crossing. This revelation represents a significant breakthrough for those who have long held faith in the biblical account. Archaeologists have conducted deep-sea explorations in the Red Sea, uncovering remarkable artifacts that date back approximately 3,500 years. Among these discoveries were remnants of chariots, including wheels that had separated from their bodies and fragments of chariot structures that had disintegrated and scattered across the ocean floor. These artifacts were located near a submerged land bridge that aligns with the biblical description of the crossing site. Additionally, fossilized horse bones were discovered, further substantiating the biblical account. These bones are attributed to horses that existed during the period traditionally associated with the Exodus, establishing a tangible connection to the ancient Egyptian army. The significance of these horse bones is noteworthy. Unlike human remains, which could potentially arise from various sources, horse skeletons are less likely to be found in large quantities in a single underwater locale. The presence of these bones suggests that a considerable number of horses and chariots were indeed lost at sea, closely aligning with the biblical narrative. Furthermore, the underwater archaeological site revealed coral-encrusted artifacts, including components that may have belonged to ancient weapons and tools. These findings imply that the site could have served as a battlefield or staging area for an ancient conflict. This discovery not only provides physical evidence that corroborates a well-known historical account, but also opens new avenues for research into ancient Egyptian warfare and technology. What adds to the intrigue of this discovery is the fact that archaeologists have yet to uncover all available evidence. Numerous artifacts remain submerged, awaiting discovery. The Gulf of Aqaba, part of the larger Red Sea, has captivated historians, scientists, and religious scholars for centuries. The biblical account of the Red Sea crossing aligns with the geographical features of this area with remarkable precision. The underwater terrain includes a submerged land bridge, which some believe may have been utilized during the crossing. Moreover, the chariot wheels and components that have been recovered thus far have been analyzed and dated back to the era of ancient Egypt, specifically the 18th dynasty, which is believed to align with the time of Moses. These artifacts are not merely remnants, they have been meticulously studied and displayed in museums, providing a tangible link to the past. We invite you to share your thoughts regarding the evidence that scientists have discovered to substantiate the crossing of the Red Sea. Please feel free to express your opinions in the comments section below.